Hello, and this is a book review and some interesting ideas that I found here in this book, Naked Statistics. Also with a quick review, this book is mostly educational, I would say, not necessarily have a premise in mind, not trying to change your mind, it's just trying to give you or to teach you more about statistics. Uh, they start very good, a yeah, very good introduction that he's trying to convey statistics in a very intuitive way, which he was able to do, I think, until the last uh, third, I think, or maybe land like an, until at least the first half, or maybe the first two thirds of the book. After that, he started to get very into much into numbers and coefficients, uh, which is all good, but not in audible. And I see this book is only on audible. So I think he lost it in the last part, but it could be, could it started with a four stars, but after that, uh, he got down to three, unfortunately. But overall, he's, he's, he's doing a quite good job. He's in the right way of explaining statistics better and with uh, more intuitively. So I did uh, help me a lot. And he has some interesting ideas. He's going through the same um, things we don't understand about statistics. So what kinds of biases we have and just that jargon. He explained that mostly in a very good way. So let's see the notes. First one here, the income of an average American only calculates the income of people that work and not people that aren't. So there is some kind of a disparate, disparity there. So we only calculate those ones who work. So we think there is the average income is such and such, but we don't, we don't calculate those people that do not work. So the average in some way should be lower. The mean and unlike the mean is less likely to be influenced by outliers. For example, people that earn very high incomes. So the median is better than the mean because the mean would be influenced by people that earn high incomes, but the median is just the middle. So this is, uh, the median is in this way is better. Standard deviation is how dispersed the data is. The normal range is one standard deviation, which is 68% of the data. And this is the standard deviation is how dispersed, how, where is the data falls? So one standard deviation between one standard deviation plus and minus one would be, um, would be 68%. Percentages can be widely misleading. 50% higher wage could be a few dollars more. So we, sometimes percentages give you give us the wrong impression, the wrong perspective, and we think, oh, 50% higher. And we think it's much higher, but it could be just a dollar. Next one is the median is also not the best indicator. Sometimes a cure, for example, if it works, it works well. But if it doesn't, if, but if, but it might not work for many people. So this is where the median fails. Let's say we have a cure. So we, when it works, it works well, but sometimes it doesn't work well for many people. So the median would not be able to catch that part because for the people that would not work, we would still be if they won't be in the, in the median, if that makes sense. Hollywood blockbusters report failed, reports failed to adjust for inflation, which shows an inaccurate picture of what movies are the best sellers. So they don't calculate Hollywood blockbusters and they say, oh, the last movie and it's in the Marvel or whatever movie, they this is the most high income producing ever, but when they don't, they fail to calculate inflation. So a movie 30 or 50 years ago, which had 5 million, for example, today is more than 5 million. It's not five, it's seven or whatever. How much is inflation? 
Deciding what school that does better based on teachers' success is not a good indicator because some schools get good students in the first place. I really like this idea because deciding what school does better only based on the teacher's success is not really gives us the, the perfect pictures of what's going on because some school just gets a better student in the first place so you don't know how the teachers are doing maybe just people that come there are better in the first place negative correlation is when one go up the other go down while positive correlation is one go up the other go down just positive and and negative correlation so negative one go up that go down and if it's positive both go up Expected value is how much money you accept to get back from investing a dollar, for example. This is the expected value. You invest a dollar, how much are you supposed to get back? More than a dollar, less than a dollar, that's the expected value. In the long run, insurance is not profitable. The expected value is lower than what you invest. It's only worth if it's, it's only worth it is, we cannot outstand the events such as a losing your car. So overall, in the long run, insurance is not profitable. So it's better not to purchase insurance. The only reason you would purchase insurance is when you cannot outstand loss. Let's say you bought a car, you cannot stand $30,000 uh, loss. So get insurance. But if it's for your phone, for example, and you can outstand that uh, thousand or $500, you should, uh, for your house, you should get because you cannot outstand whatever. 200 300 400 thousand dollars you should purchase an insurance laws that prohibit texting while driving seem to make things worse as people try to hide their phone and therefore have their eyes less on the road that's an interesting idea so those laws that prohibit texting but texting while driving have have a counterproductive effect because what happens is they try to hide the phone so they look more on the phone or they're even less focused on the road because they need to hide that and it could be even lower so it's farther from the eyes and such. Some risk assessments are failing to address what's going to happen when the unlikely event happens. For example, how much will loss if the 1% probability will happen. Sometimes we, the risk, they have risk assessments, but they don't calculate what's going to happen if the unlikely would happen. If the one, they said 99% of the time, this is what should happen. But what happened in the 1% and this 1%, what's going to happen then? And many times they fail to uh, assess that or calculate that. And therefore, sometimes when the 1% does happen, there is a major problems. Improbabilistic events might occur and in innocent people might go to jail for that. So some things that are not probable. So for example, I think the, he's, he's talking about um, children deaths in, in the bed at an early age. And it happens in a family, it happens twice. And they said if it's... It, uh, Statistically speaking, it was like one to a few millions. But improbabilistic events might happen. And they sent that mother to jail, which was really out, like uh, staggering. And those sometimes they get sent to jail for that, for no, not, not for not their fault. And so this is one, hap one of those improbabilistic event happens. Statistical discrimination is a result of deriving the information based on statistics, which can discriminate some populations. However, the question is philosophical, not statistical. So this is statistical discrimination, is how or what we derive from the information. And that can sometimes discriminate some of the population. But this is not a statistic problem. This is a philosophical, what you derive from that data. The file drawer bias. Only those successful studies are being published while the unsuccessful ones never get published. And this is one of the problems with many, there is a lot of replication crisis as well, 
One of the reasons is the file drawer bias because only those successful studies get published. Well, what about those that doesn't? So many times we only see those successful ones. Standard error refers to how accurate is the sample compared to the general population. High mean it's more dispersed, low mean it's more concentrated around the mean. This is standard error, is how accurate the sample compared to the general population. Is it representative of the population or not? If you have high, it means that it's more dis dispersed, so it's not very concentrated. If it's low, it's more concentrated and they're all similar. So there is low error, you can think of it that way. Low error means it's more concentrated. There is no error. The null hypothesis in a trial would be the person is innocent at first, and the alternative hypothesis is that person is guilty. By rejecting one, we accept the other. So in a trial, at first, a person is innocent, and that's the null hypothesis. The alternative hypothesis is the person is guilty. And always, when you accept one, you have to reject the other. You cannot be guilty and unguilty at the same time. The wording of the question will change their answers widely. Climate change versus global warming, for example. So the wording is really important because when you say climate change, you say global warming has a huge effect on answers. Regression analysis helps us to control for other variables that impact the results. This is how we can control variables by regression analysis. Places with more police usually have more crime, so it's hard to study what causes what. I like this idea. So we say, oh, you could just check on those places when they have more police. Do they have more or less crime? And you don't know because maybe those places that have more crime have more police. So it's hard to know. This is going with the, next, the previous one. Checking the crime rate on terrorist alert day, days enables researchers to decide if more cops equal a low crime. So they found a loop around this problem that we spoke here. So checking the crime rate on terrorist alert today. So there is more police on the road, on the, on the streets. And what we see is that there is less crime. There is lower crime. And on, based on that, they were able to, uh, to say, or to definitively say, that more caps equal low crime. It's hard to test how summer school is effective because people who go there already have issues and difficulties. <laughs> and it's kind of funny. So it's it, because when you go, it's hard to, to test if summer school is effective. How do you know? You say, oh, let's see how well do they do afterwards. But the thing is, the people who go there have already issues and difficulties, so they might do lower than expected. And the last one is white neighborhoods have higher rates of autism. Could it be because they are more likely to diagnose it? So it's uh, the data is shows that white neighborhoods has higher rates of autism. You can say maybe because of genes or whatever reasons, but could it be because they're more likely to diagnose it because they're like, should you, sometimes they're, those white neighborhoods are in higher income socioeconomic status, so they're more likely to diagnose. So that's why you might think they have higher autism. Interesting question, I think you need to defensively or address that because it's hard to know. So again, overall, probably a three, might even get a high three because he likes, he has some good ideas and he's trying and he has, I like the way he can convey the data mostly, but I think he lost it in the second part. He should have stayed on his curse. Uh, also, some of some of his examples that he gives for data were a little confusing. Some of them were very good, very understandable, but the other ones uh, was a little confusing. That's it. Thank you.